I'm a bundle. So for week one, here was my real, my real, this was my goal, to talk about the science behind your thinking. Of all the weeks, this was going to be the most sciencey one. But uh, there's only so many videos, <laughs> so many videos that you can watch. I, here's what I would really recommend. The videos are free on PBS. You can also see them on YouTube. There are four of them. They last an hour each. There's no way on Sunday mornings that I can really give you all the meat from those four episodes. They really do try to teach you a little about how your mind is being stolen. And there are snippets. I mean, I watched one yesterday. I'm not going to show it today. But um, how the developers of the phones are keep holding us hostage by the um, way that they set up our notifications, the way that they keep reeling us in. Some of us can't sit through worship without looking at it. We can't. We're addicted. But what you need to know is it's not your free choice. You are, they've taken your natural tendencies and trained you. Train me. I have my phone on the table, and if I get bored, even though I have people at my house, some of them take a lot longer to eat than I do. <laughs> and I find myself picking up my phone. I'm with other human beings. I'm not alone, and I find myself, I can't help it. It's right there. I have to pick it up and check things. And it turns out that the things I need to check, I've been programmed to do. They take our humanness and they program us to do that. So we don't have time to talk about all of that today, but I invite you, we'll try to reveal parts of it. It's a time of unveiling, but not all at once, okay? So um, it'll have to be a little at a time because y'all aren't willing to stay till three or four o'clock today, I don't think. Um, so. I'm just going to read this sentence to you. We need to discover that we're not who we think we are. We imagine that our conscious minds make most of the decisions. But in reality, we go through much of our lives on autopilot. And the marketeers and the political people and the social media they all rely on it. And so what we're trying to do is unveil some of that. If you draw a veil over a particular subject, you do not speak about it because it's unpleasant and you don't want to think about it. So you that, that's, the, that's the whole essence of drawing, you know, how that language comes from. We're going to draw a veil over it. We don't want to talk about it. It's unpleasant. You don't want to think that other people are controlling your thinking. You don't want to think about that. But just watching that one video made me really more aware of the ways that I'm being manipulated in my life through my phone we draw a veil over it and what uh, I and and I showed a video last week at the end of worship to speak to the idea that I did get this idea of unveiling from the center of action and contemplation because only through contemplation can you really unveil what's going on this week, uh, President-elect Biden gave a speech on Wednesday, and I thought it was a great leadership speech. And in that speech, he asked, I'm just gonna tell you essence of one thing that he said, and I'm not quoting him exactly, but this is the essence of what he said. He said, that's not who we are. And I took a lot of comfort in that. I accepted that to be true 
And I took a lot of comfort in that and went, yeah, that's not me, that's them. Mmm, I felt really good when I, that sounded really great. That's not who we are, but the painful part, the unveiling, the unveiling part is to realize that is exactly who we are. That's why it's so painful is because that's exactly who we are. Racism is here. Now that young man in the video had a lot of optimism talking, you know, being free in DC with his little high heeled shoes on and being free and everything's beautiful now. That's a lot of optimism. But this hatred this white supremacy is built into our system and every single one of us in this room were born into it and we can't see it. We think it's them and not us. This week, um, I posted a goofy picture. Only two people have uh, even, you know, said anything about it at all. There again, we're programmed to go back and look, aren't we? How many times have you posted a picture on Facebook and then you want to go back and see if anybody commented or said anything? It's part of your programming. So this is the ugly little silly. It's just silly. But I got a lot of deep meaning out of it. I have this teeny tiny wound. And even from where it's not healed. Washing dishes really didn't help it any. But it's not healed because it's deep. It's tiny, but it's deep. And it came from, uh, let's just ask, all the lefties in the room, hold up your hand. Brett, come on, proud. <laughs> we're the minority in the room, but we're a strong minority in this group. Because if you look, you got, yeah, we, we, we got 30% uh, in here in the population of the world, it's only 20%. So we're like doing pretty good. Special. Yeah, so I'm just saying, if you're a righty, that wound is your fault. And you don't even know it's your fault. But they created the scissors that I used this week with your comfort in mind. They put a ridge in it so you would be comfortable and did not care that it would hurt me. Didn't care at all. I took a picture this morning but I forgot to put it in the PowerPoint. I don't know why I didn't have, think about putting another picture in, but when I was making coffee this morning, I started to be aware. I had to pick it up with my right hand. My right hand is not my best hand. The markings, as long as I hold it in my right hand, well, I switch hands when I'm filling it up. So I have to read the readings across. Fortunately, water is clear, so that's not so bad. To have to read the markings on the back side of the pot because there you can't there are, they didn't bother they didn't think I'd be using that pot why well, put markings on the other side for those people not a thought goes into the development of anything for left-handed people and I have lived with that discrimination all of my life and the only person who seemed to care was my mother. If my mother could find something for a lefty, she would buy it for me. And I do have some scissors that are for lefties. But on this particular week, I had a round little carpet and I had a rectangle of padding. And I was just sure that I could cut that padding to fit that round carpet. And I could but it took a toll. It was a painful process by the time I got to the end uh, because it was so thick and so hard to cut. So I'm just saying, this is such, you're probably thinking, oh, what a whiny honey. It's such a little big deal. Get over yourself. So what you couldn't sharpen your pencils in school? So what your handwriting, you got a C in handwriting because you couldn't slam it the right way. So what? Get over it. This is a right-handed world, live with it. So my question to you today, I just wanna know, 
do you have a whiny honey story? Do you have an incident of discrimination against yourself for some way that you're different from other people? or against other people that you're concerned about. Just remember this is kid stuff, so sort of, kind of. You have trouble with serrated knives? Yeah. You just don't cut right? No, they don't. Ron is convinced, and I'm not so sure that, I mean, I, I think I believe him, but you're a beautiful person, you yeah. get treated differently. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's not, it's scientifically true. I mean, they've done studies. Yeah, yeah if you want to get elected to office, if you want to be a, it's not just m jobs that you're going after that require beauty, like being a model. It's everything. Yeah, because he, you know, he says that, yeah. you know, so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, you know, they really do good because they're beautiful. Yes. Um, I mean, it's, that's yeah. hard to think about, but. Yeah. Us ugly, we just don't stand a chance. Yeah, us, us beautiful, we try to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> and height. Height is another. Beautiful and tall. There you go. Yeah. Beautiful and tall. Oh, and, and that brings another thing. Young versus old. Yeah. If you're old. Yeah. You're almost no good. Yeah. <laughs> Skinny versus fluffy. Oh, goodness, yes. Yes. Absolutely. It's, it's hard when you hear, um, you know, a child. It's hard when you hear a child say that they don't like your child because she's fat. Oh, yeah. That, it, that's something that I've never forgot. I mean, I, I hate to like hold it against that person, but because they were a child, I mean, I don't really, yeah. but it's never left my brain. But we do it. As a society, we treat people different by the way that they look. The young man that was here Friday night was attractive, tall, slender, clean, dressed nice. What's wrong with him? Yeah. So what would we have treated him differently if he was dirty or a different ethnic group? Don't know. Just saying. The, the this I just think that the only reason that I lift up being lefties is because you go through your life not thinking about it because you're in the privileged group. Everything is manufactured for you. Another, another one, I just thought of another one. Okay, wide shoes. I cannot, I'm, I can go, I can go to a, go to a store, has 2,000 pairs of shoes. For women, they'll have two pairs of shoes for men. Two. I can't find, and, and they're probably not my size, but they're certainly not the style I want. So, fortunately, online has changed everything for short, overweight, left-handed, wide-footed people. Well, I got two of the two. Amy's gonna say I'm pushing the issue, but I'm gonna say it anyway. When uh, I was little and my parents saw me using my left hand, they tried to get me to use my right. And in the end, all that did was make me eat without the utensil. Yeah. Everything got picked up with my hand. And when my first grandson was born, uh, I think it would be my, is Doug the second or first? Maybe. Huh? Yeah. First. Um, they thought he was going to be left handed. Mm -hmm. And my son in law made a comment that they, he didn't want his son handicapped. And I looked at him and I said, well, his grand, both his grandparents here are, are left-handed and I don't consider us handicapped. He never made it, you know, another yeah. comment after that, but you know, that to me was just a stupid, idiotic comment. But then you consider the source it came from, it was logical. I think that the injustices that 
people with wide feet or people with left-handedness or whatever, I admit that they're tiny little insignificant things and that we have learned to adapt to the world of the majority. But I think that it's easier to see, if you think about it, how it must be for people who um, are not in the white majority of this country. They suffer injustices of a major proportion in total difference. And this week that played out, I'm sorry, but if you believe that black thousands of black people marching to Congress would have been let in and let parade around and let leave and now we have to be looking them up online to see who they are and maybe arrest a few of them. I don't think it would have played out the same if they had been people without privilege. I think the death toll would be higher. I think the arrest count would be higher and there wouldn't have been the freedom that those people who just because of what they looked like were allowed to do the things that they were allowed to do and walk away and possibly get away with the horrible things that they did. So I just, if, uh, and the thing about the uh, civil rights movement, the folks that participated in the 50s and the 60s believed in justice, they believe that if you you could make a beeline to freedom, you just keep marching and you keep protesting and everything is going to fall into place and change for you. It's just going to happen. But beeline to change is not reality. If so, we still would not have racial injustice all these years later. We're talking 50, 70 years of protests and the injustices that have happened every week just recently. Um, those rioters in DC had the same probably crazy idea that there was a beeline to change. <coughs> If we just go there and take it out, we can change the uh, dynamics of the election if we just go there and it's not reality. They couldn't just make change that way. That is not the way for real change. Real change comes in the order we've talked about. There's order then there must be some disorder in order for us to jump ahead and have reorder. And it's not a straight line, and that's not realism. It wasn't realistic for those rioters to believe they could go and march and destroy things and it would destroy and they would get their way. That's not how it works. We have to remove the veil to know how things work and for real change. 